Hello, good evening. Um, really nice to see what's happening over at Westex. Um, and I can definitely concur with some of the things that Chloe said in terms of barriers for students. Um, we have kind of a slightly different cohort in some ways, but not in others. Right, hopefully you can see my screen now. Um, so this is the project that we did no, in yeah. summer. We can't, we can't see oh. your screen, Ali. You need to hold on, hold on. Share. Can we see it now? Yeah, yeah. real. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, so just a bit of background from us. Um, we're in 11 to 16 secondary school. Um, we've got quite a, we've got a nine form entry uh, with roughly 30 students in each year. Um, we have over 20 feeder schools. Um, so in terms of looking at where our students are coming from, that is from across the whole of the city and beyond. Um, we work with Sustrans, so Charlotte is our link for Sustrans, um, which has been great. So we've done, done things like Dr. Bike, um, we've been able to put into place a travel plan, um, and then she suggested some other ideas. Um, we offer bikeability to students in year seven, um, and we pick up any in year eight that want to do it. Um, we don't, it's, it's a choice for our students. Um, it's not run in an activities week or anything like that. We have three students a day uh, with, in, with our amazing instructor, Sam Cam, that many of you may know. Um, and she tailors that course to them. Um, and what we feel is actually there's no point in a student doing bikeability if they're not then actually going to put it into practice. It's like doing first aid but not using it. Um, we have a group of students who live so close to school that actually on a day-to-day -day commuter basis they're not going to be on their bikes because it will take them five minutes to walk. Um, but then we've got another group of students who actually will commute on a daily basis into school. Um, we've linked in with the big pedal previously, particularly focusing in on year seven and eight. Um, and that's been uh, amazing. We've had amazing numbers. So 2019, we were in the top five in the Southwest for those students that cycled in on that week that we focused in on. Um, we also have in year 10 residential, um, we run a touring cycle trip around Holland. Uh, where students basically are self-sufficient for the week and we tour them through the amazing cycle routes of the Dutch countrysides, towns and cities. Um, so actually cycling in England is quite different than cycling in Holland and it's amazing over there um, and really really safe. Right let me just move on. So originally as Chloe mentioned the plan and I think it was kind of for them as well was to um, lead some rides with some of our close feeder primary schools where it was going to be appropriate we could make links with them and uh, bring them in do some lead rides look at the safe routes look at hazards etc then covid hit so everybody's kind of shut down and then this kind of led to the project so the solution was to cycle and map possible safe routes to St Peter's from 19 of our feeder schools. That was then shared with new year six students, parents coming in, current students and also staff across the school. Um, for each of the 19 primary feeder schools, um, you can see some lovely pictures of me at the bottom, um, they received a video. So when I cycled those routes, I GPS them um, which meant that I could create a relive video. On my cycling, I also took pictures at particular pinch points or junctions that the students really needed to be aware of. So um, for every route, there is an introduction of me about safe cycling in terms of wearing helmets, bright clothing, advantages of cycling, having your lights. There's then a relive video of the route itself with flashing up images of particular junctions and then the end is sandwiched with how to lock your bike, where the bike shed is, etc. Um, that was done for all of the 19 routes and there was also a map produced for each of them. Uh, the link to the website then went out to all those different kind of groups from that. Um, 
right, moving on, just wary of time. Um, what we learned, first of all, there's no way I could have done that if we hadn't been in lockdown. It took forever and I cycled hundreds and hundreds of miles doing it because from school I had to cycle out, recycle the route, um, but with a, with a hat on saying, actually, where are the dangers? What are the problems? Is this the safest route? Um, some of the signage is really confusing. As you can see, this is a junction directly outside of school. Who has right of way? Nobody's clear on actually who has right of way at this junction. Um, in terms of feedback from parents, we've had some really, really positive feedback. And then when we've had some feedback that's gone, well, I'm not letting my child cycle because it's going to be wet. Okay, that's fine. You don't have to cycle to school when it's raining, but here is a possible option that you can. Um, one of our problems is cycle storage. We know that lots of students cycle, um, but, and also with our year groups being in bubbles, trying to separate them is not easy. Um, with their cycle storage, we have, we know there's not enough cycle storage. Um, so that's something we're looking at, but because we're a PFI school, we can't just go um, drilling things into concrete. Okay, that's a real problem. Um, we know there's an issue with cycle helmets um, and getting kids to wear helmets to school. Um, and then we also know there's an issue with particular routes, um, mainly, and this links to my quick ask, okay, with the maintenance of some of the routes. Um, we're encouraging our students to cycle, but there's a couple of issues. Have we probably cycled about 90% of the cycle routes in Exeter? Um, there are pinch points. Things like when you exit a junction, the hedge is so overgrown that actually there's not space to properly exit a junction and then get back on the cycle route. Um, interestingly, the day that um, the E4 was opened on Pinho Road to Exhibition Way, I happened to actually cycle that four times that day and that was probably the only time I was nearly knocked off my bike twice because the signage, um, the cars were not used to actually letting cyclists have right of way when it's painted on the floor. So a whistle stop tour but my biggest ask is can anyone connect me with organisations um, or Devon County Council departments that help maintain the cycle routes and signage across the city? And breathe. <laughs> great. And can I ask you to stop sharing? Brilliant. Ali, that was great. Thank you very much. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, questions coming in around um, what you've created and a resource. Um, my question is actually, is that resource, I, I, I actually, it, it's Marjolyn, I think you, you've put a really great question in there about how that can be a resource for other schools to use, what you've done, what you've achieved for your year, for those year six pupils from those feeder schools going into year seven as a, as a potential webinar for other schools. Um, I think that would be a, a, a great resource. Um, oh, and there is a question, sorry, I've been alerted by a team member. There's an, a question around the GPS program that you used, Ali. Um, so I was just off the Garmin, so my Garmin data then uploaded to an app called Relive um, and it then uses your GPS data with Google Maps um, to create your route, but very cleverly, if at the same time on that route you have taken images, like on an iPhone, it automatically picks up the exact spot on the GPS data where you took that image, so it inserts it into the route at the exact point where that junction or that particular turn is. 